everybody, I'm Jenny Smith. Welcome to episode five of the Quilt Folk Virtual Show and Tell. Don't forget to subscribe and like and share these films with your crafty friends. The interesting thing this time that I noticed when putting my interviews from around the world together is that all three people have come to quilting with a new approach, breaking the boundaries of what a traditional quilt may be. And so it makes for really, really interesting, engaging projects and something different this time for us all to look at and enjoy. I'm talking now with Vindulka from the Czech Republic, uh, who has made this quilt with her French husband, Olivier, living in the UK. So it's a very wonderful international quilt that won Best in Show at Festival of Quilts here in the UK a couple of days ago. Yep. Well, I always admired people whose hobby became their way of living. So I was looking, what is, what is it for me? I did millinery classes, I did upholstery classes, and then I found patchwork. And that was it. I was addicted. That was that. I opened my little little shop so that I could teach. And and ten years later, this this is what happened. I grew up in Czech Republic uh, during the communism. So my mom was always making clothes for us, um, just so that we've got different different things. So I was sewing since I was maybe 12, 13. I started by helping her. You know, mom, can you make me new skirt or something? And she would say, yeah but come and unpick this for me and tuck this for me so I started with just just doing things like that and then I upgraded to being able to use a sewing machine and what I used to do in my teenage years I would go to charity shops buy um, the biggest clothes I could possibly find but but in the fabrics I like because then I had enough material for my petite figure to to, to make something but uh, but it was kind of um, the patchwork which really captured me and, and really sort of caught my eye and actually not so much the patchwork itself that the piecing what I actually love is the free motion quilting that's my passion that's my love I you know dropping the feed dogs down that's 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 my thing you know drop them down and just go and I'm and I'm literally transformed into a different different place it's like my form of meditation in a way when I was quilting, you start in the middle and then work your way out. So you are in a way working, um, you know, in, in, in circles, getting sort of larger, larger, larger. And, um, and even though uh, I'm obviously not making it up on the spot, my husband is the one who designed the whole quilt. So he uh, drew the whole design on the back of it. And then I quilted it from the back, having the pretty thread in the bobbin, because I didn't want to risk that any of the marking is going to come back or be seen or anything like that. So, so I was kind of following, following the lines which he has uh, prepared for me. And, um, and then, yeah, he had this idea of, of filling, filling the rest with the, with the feathers, sort of making them to sort of fit that, that, that nice curved border. And um, at the beginning, he just drew four of them for me and said, oh, you can just freeform all the others. And I did the first four and I'm just like, I don't think so, you'll have to draw them all. So he did draw every single one of them. There is not a single feather which is, which is the same. So the quilt is called Our Ladies. It comes from our children. Uh, when I picked them up from school and they had to sort of spend another hour with us in the shop, they would always ask, are there any ladies in the shop? So all of my students, they are always called ladies. And, and we dedicated the quilt to them. So it's, um, it's uh, every single feather represents, the, in its uniqueness, represents all of our sort of customers, students, all the people who influenced us and help us on our journey. In a, in a way, you could call this a whole cloth quilt because uh, the fabric is this lovely yellowish, yellowish batik and everything else is paint on the top of it. So everything what is not the, the, the yellowish batik is actually painted on the top. I, I'm always um, supporting everybody's journey, you know. If traditional quilting is what rock your boat, go ahead and I admire the, the, the sort of effort and, and the, the time and the skill. And that's what's actually beautiful about quilting or, or the textile world, that there is so many disciplines and everybody can find what, what is their own thing. So yeah, this is mine. <laughs> Could you wash it then, do you think? Um, well, the, the fabric paint can be washed if necessary, but this quilt is never going to see wash machine in its life. <laughs> Uh, 
Augusto started quilting in April 2020 and he's going to talk us through his Tiempo quilt now from Spain. My name is Augusto Garcia. I live in Spain, as in, specifically on the northwest Spain in a city called Vigo. I didn't take any kind of class or course about sewing. Never, ever. In fact, <laughs> I mean, the truth is before before. For March from 2020, uh, I haven't touched a sewing machine in my life. I mean, I didn't, I, I think I saw a sewing machine like two times in my life, something like that. Here in Spain, there is not a very big tradition of quilting. I mean, not, not many people do it here. I was working as a, as a stand designer. I, Due to my job, I had to travel a lot. So when the pandemic broke out, I had the problem that I couldn't uh, continue working on that. So I had to stop working, I had to stay at home. And that is the reason why I started sewing and quilting and making this, making these designs. When I was first telling my friends that I was going to design quilts and so PDF patterns, they was looking at me like this guy has become absolutely crazy and not understanding anything about it. The title is Tiempo, which means time. All the drawings for the, for the templates, all the breakdown to, for making the, the, the clock hands and the, and the curves, all that part, it's super interesting for me because it's, it has a very close relationship with, the, with architecture. This is one circle, a piece circle, so you can rotate it as you want. So it, had, it can have multiple positions and then you can choose the position that you want. I mean, if, if you're doing inset circles and, and designing and producing quilts like this after one year of quilting, then I wonder what, what will happen in the future? <laughs> yes, yeah. When I was working as a as a stand designer, um, time mean it meant uh, suffering really. The, I didn't have a, a free day in in the week I, like normal people. I mean, everybody has a, the weekend where they they can have the, the hobbies or they can go to the cinema or they can I don't know have a rest. Or something and I, I didn't have that that in my life. So maybe there is some connection with this quilt on my, my former life. Now I I am the owner, let's say that I'm the owner of my, my time. The quilting has in some way has uh, has freed me up. Has set me free set me free in some ways because you're right. When I'm quilting, I forget about everything. It's like the, uh, a complete disconnection from from my life and my problems and everything. We're going to Gloria in Los Angeles with her beautiful folklorico quilt. Sewing is a tradition. I mean that that. Latinos have had, I mean, besides making their own clothes. But when you go into Mexico and you look at the work that they do as far as their embroidery, as far as their dressmaking, as far as all of their textiles, it's very, very impressive. Um, the quilts that they made, and I know because my grandmother uh, made one, were just the flower sacks, you know, sewing flower sacks on top of flower sacks for, you know, the kind of comforters that she used to make at that time for the winter time. And so it's really in the, in, in the Latino community throughout, it's just not married to, I guess, the tradition of quilting across at least the US. I've, I've never seen a circular quilt. Let's start with that. Well, it is a round quilt. I, you know, I could have put it in my, my uh, you know, I thought about putting it on a black background so it would stand out, but I said, why not make it a round quilt? Now I'll have to figure out how to hang a round quilt. But the whole idea of this quilt is 
like a folklorico dancer when she spins and puts her dress up. The whole idea is that it makes this beautiful design. And so I used a, a spiral technique here on this one in order to make the quilt. So all of Mexico has folklorico dancers. Every festival has them. My daughter, uh, I put her in a folklorico class when she was little. So she has her dresses green like this, which is why I made mine green. And, and what's wonderful is when you become such a good dancer that you can get your skirt to do this kind of effect. And not everyone can do this. And so I've seen it done and it's quite beautiful. And so I've tried to capture that same effect here. Tell me a little bit about the, the Latin community and then and all the incredible things that you've done with quilting. Telas, which is an acronym for the East Los Angeles Stitchers, has, has just become a wonderful gathering of women who are very like-minded. We have all been, some of us just started quilting, some of us have been quilting for a while. We belong to other gills, but we really hadn't found a place to kind of showcase our um, culture, our heritage, our traditions. And so we have been able to come together and make amazing quilts. Uh, we have done Day of the Dead quilts. We have done Katrina, which is a Day of the Dead woman. We have done Frida quilts. We've traveled with them to Australia, to Mexico. Um, we've, yeah, we've gone all over different parts of the U.S. to have little exhibits here and there. We're very proud of the work that we do. I'm the oldest of 10 children. We were in a two-bedroom house when I was when I was being raised as a kid. And I think that that was, I was able to study with all that noise around me. I can't imagine you sitting quietly and sewing. Do you talk to yourself? Well, I have to have everything going on at the same time. Sometimes I'll cook, be cooking a roast. Uh, I'll be watching TV and I will be sewing at the same time. Um, if I'm in a very quiet room, I, that doesn't work for me at all. I love to see a lot going on, uh, but in my own head, I'm quiet doing what I'm doing. It started out as a mental health thing for me years ago, as you know, I'm, I was an elected official and worked, you know, 10, 12 hours a day. And so it was nice to come home after, you know, dealing with my child and dinner and putting everything away just to have an hour, an hour and a half of something that was just easy, like sewing. And so um, it was a wonderful hobby. And now that I'm retired, I get much more time to focus on it. I want to capture who we are as a community, who we are as people, uh, who we are as families, and, and interpret that and put it into quilts, which I think has been the tradition of quilt makers from the very, very beginning, is putting so much of themselves into every quilt that they created. Painted feathers, complex inset circles, round quilts on Latino themes. Another incredible, exciting and inspiring mixture of makers and quilt projects. Don't forget to comment and share. It'd be really lovely to hear from you. Get in touch with Jenny at quiltfolk.com if you're interested in being featured or know a friend who I should chat to for these show and tells around the world. And thank you so much for watching. Have a fantastic day and see you again soon.